the nation's favourite celebrities. Oh, I like surprises. Paired up with an expert. I got excited then. <gasps> Whoopsie. <laughs> and a classic car. Here we go. Wow. Their mission to scar Britain for antiques. For my own safari. The aim to make the biggest profit at auction. <gasps> but it's no easy ride. Oh dear. Who will find a hidden gem? Yeah. Mm. Who will take the biggest risk? Will anybody follow expert advice? I hate it. There will be worthy winners <laughs> and valiant losers. Double draft. Oh, no. Put your pebble to the metal. Spend, spend, spend. This is the Celebrity Antiques Road Trip. Groovy. Today we're proud to induct a couple of proper pop stars into the Road Trip Hall of Fame. This car feels very... Very large. It feels regal. Like you're gonna go somewhere important. We are going somewhere important. <laughs> We're going to the shop. <laughs> yes! Behind the wheel of that lovely old Mercedes is singer and songwriter Emily Sande. And by her side, the record producer, musician, and Emily's chum, Naughty Boy. Give her your best shot. I will do. Yeah. I'm here for you, Emily. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. Emily grew up in Aberdeen and studied neuroscience in Glasgow before deciding to put her delightful soprano within everyone's range, and no wonder. Do you know, we started making your first album ten years ago. Wow. This year. Wow. How crazy is that? Yeah. Now look at us now. <laughs> Living <laughs> regal life. Naughty, <laughs> real name Shahid Khan, hails from Watford and once produced music in his garden shed. He now makes hits with some of the world's biggest performers. Did we mention Beyoncé? <laughs> but does all this help when sniffing out old knickknacks? We've got to view it like they're songs. Which I one like would I want them. to listen to 12 years I from now? I love that. Let's treat the antiques like songs. songs. Yeah. Yes. Hopefully between us we can make a... Um... A symphony. Yes. <laughs> well, there's a couple of willing backup musicians who can help them out with that. Auctioneers Catherine Southern and Charlie Ross <laughs> in their electrically powered 1960s mini. This reminds me of a milk float. Have you ever been in a milk float? <laughs> no, but it makes that noise. In a I milk was a milkman float. once. Oh, were you? Yeah. Oh, you should have seen my my silver tops. <laughs> Charlie. <laughs> There used to be a band called The Floaters, of course. Float on, eh? £400 each and I just hope he doesn't sing. <laughs> what would you say your expectations are from Charlie? I want him to be on my side. Yes. <laughs> I want him to be a team player. I want to trust Catherine, but I also want Catherine to trust me mm. a little bit. But, Very interesting. Yeah. Am I giving away too much? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Although, I do just need to add that their motor was manufactured before seat belts were mandatory. Anyway, enough duos. Let's have a Fab Four. Good morning. Stand to attention when in the presence of greatness. <laughs> Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Hello. Emily. Nice Hello. You. May I do nice this? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mwah. Mwah. Are you excited about this? Yes, yeah. very excited. But we'll have to meet from afar, Charlie, because um, <laughs> this is my... Um, is that your lady? This is my lady. Then, Emily, we are the you team. and my man. Take my arm. <laughs> A winning lady. Oh, A winning oh, lady. oh yes. 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 Then allow me. We'll see you at the first shop. Might do. See you there. No, see you there. We'll see you and we'll beat you to the first shop. Oh. How about that? Ooh. Keep within the speed limit. Fighting tour. Well, someone wants to win. Oh! Oh, my goodness me! <laughs> Should we start going? Yeah. Are you comfortable? Yes. You're safe with me, Emily. Oh, Nothing you. can go wrong. <laughs> Their adventures will begin in Bracknell, on the western edge of Greater London, and then head into the capital itself before winding up at an auction back in Berkshire at Bourne End. But what will our pop stars plump for? Naughty. <laughs> what sort of antiques you like? Do you buy antiques? You know, I love it when someone says, oh, they went to a car boot sale and they found this vase and then they found out that it's uh, actually worth it. Like, I love those kind of stories. You do realise that's going to happen to us. We're going to go of into course a shop. It is. We're going to find a vase which everybody else thinks yeah. is worth £2.50. Exactly. And we're going to sell it yes, for about 20000 Crikey! Talk about upping the ante. Nice to be competitive, though. And do you have any advice what I should be looking for in terms of value? Age is no longer the prerequisite of value. 
Right. In the past, if something was George the First, George the Second, you know, 18th century, it was perceived to have a value. I see. Okay. Nowadays, something that's brand new, if it hits the spot with people, can be far more valuable than something old. Wow. Okay. So, I'm of a mind that although it's the antiques road trip, yeah. Don't get too hung up on antiques. I think we can take that with a pinch of salt as well. So are you good at hackling? Do you know what? Um, lately, naughty boy tends not to look at the prices of things, but that will change. Oh, right, you just to... buy. Yeah, I just buy, but at the same time, we're going to an antique shop. Yes. So I will have my haggling brain on. We'll soon see. Looks like Emily and Charlie get first dibs, though. Are you getting excited? Yes. So am I. Oh, I can't get out, Emily. <laughs> Come on, Charlie. Plenty of room inside. Stock, too. Mm. Well, apart from any actual old grain these days, of course. I'm going to go over here. You have a look on your own. Right. I'm not going to influence you, you <laughs> see. Indeed. This is all about Emily. Oh, Elton John. God, doesn't <laughs> Elton look young there? Yeah. yeah, that's a cool cover. That is cool, isn't it? Yeah. Rod Stewart. Rod Stewart. Wow, they've got good. Still singing. Yeah. Isn't he? I'm looking for one of yours. <laughs> Beautiful covers. Aren't they lovely? Hits of the 60s, there we are. <laughs> That's me. Oh, PJ Proby. No? No. The Kinks. Yeah. Well, everyone loves them. Right. Ah, <laughs> look who's turned up. Stuart Hello, again. Catherine. Hello. Lovely to see Lovely you. To see you. Welcome to the old grain Can barn. Can I introduce you to Naughty? Oh, very pleased yes. to meet he you. Yes, he is a naughty boy. Is he really? Yes. That's not my birth certificate, <laughs> Stuart. You're in safe hands. Now, eyes peeled for that vase. I mean, you never know. Oh, hello. Hello. How is it going? Um, it goes very well, actually. Have you f found anything you're passionate um, about? A few things have caught my eye, yeah. yeah. Oh, you're buying these spoons? <laughs> <laughs> Don't have a great feeling about them, but you go ahead. 1654. Oh, wow. Yeah. Really? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what Charlie spotted outside. Now, as we came in, I thought that was quite fun. I mean, what can you do? With an old pallet. That's mm. all it is, is an old pallet. That's very clever. But they painted it, put it on its side, and filled it up with uh, strawberry, mint, parsley, mm. sage. Parsley, sage, <laughs> rosemary, and thyme. Oh, it's the song. <laughs> There's a song there. Yeah. You know, they've got it in the right order, haven't they? Yeah. Does that amuse you? I really like it, yeah. I mean, it's not an antique. I admit it's not an antique. But it's useful. Um, Priced at £40. I think it's fun. Yeah. I know it's an antiques road trip, but come on, we're in it to win it. Yeah. Come inside again. Well, he's definitely been true to his word, at least. What about the others? I wasn't sure if this was a harp, but I am drawn oh, to this. Yeah. And not just because it's a musical instrument. How would you know if this is a Victorian harp? I mean, it's certainly got some age to it. Stuart, can I just ask you, why are you saying definitely Victorian? There was a very interesting small label at the base of it, which I, unfortunately, I've lost it. And it certainly led me to believe it came from a grand tour. So when you're talking about grand tour, you're talking about in the 19th century, when people were all of a sudden exploring Europe, but they yes. were going out, okay. they were going to Italy. To learn about civilization and return with a trophy or two. But that stamp that it's lost, has that changed? Well, what sort of stamp was it? What, it, on was a... A, it, was a, it looked like a museum little label at the bottom. Oh, Stuart. I know, I know. Oh, he knows. And it fell off. And it's gone. Oh. It's no, interesting, really. because you don't really find much in the form of a harp like no, this, no, do no. you? That's quite unusual. I've never seen anything like that. It's like. very, very unusual. It's got £38 pounds on it. You see, this could be our lucky mascot. It could be, but... What would you pay for it without seeing the price? I would expect it to be around £100. Pounds. No, really? But then, I'm not you, Catherine. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> the more I look at it, the more I like it. Yes. I think it's a nice thing. We like it, Stuart. Right. Can, can we park it of and, and think? Because if Emily sees this... Will she like it? Yeah, I think she will. OK, so we're better hide that. Just don't harp on about it. <laughs> Is there anything else worth addressing here? I think the thing just above your head... Oh. ..is, uh, that's a genuine... It's for hanging game. 
um, pheasants and rabbits and things like that. But typically today people have these hanging from beams in a kitchen or something like that. I've seen them with lots of herbs hanging down. Ah. Or them. plants. Or plants. Really nice. So this um, is Victorian. This is Victorian. Rusty iron. It's as found. <laughs> as found. I didn't do any work to it at all. Um, no, I can see you didn't bother cleaning it. Oh, no, thank us. you very much indeed, <laughs> Catherine. No, but, but it gives it that Victorian feel. Yes, it. rustic and rusty. And you can see that they've actually hung the hooks at different levels to maximise what you can actually put on it. Mm. I've never seen one of these no. ever. So I... I've never sold one, so I can't guarantee what it'll make. But do you, th you think it'll I think it'll well? make money, yes. What's on it, anyway? Um, 60. Well, perhaps I could do something with the price, because you're bundling two things together. We like a bundle, we don't do. we? We do, we love a bundle. Is it your thing, though? <laughs> it's not my thing. Like I would probably use it to hang some laundry and dry. <laughs> use it as a dryer. <laughs> so is that ninety-eight for both, without the discount? No. If you bought the two from yep. me, I'll do it for eighty pound. Are we happy to go for the two? Yes. For eighty pounds. It was really kind of you to do that. Oh, thank, thank you, you so very much. much. I think Catherine. we will shape. Thank you. Well, they don't hang about, do they? No, not them. Them. OK, onwards. Onwards and backwards. £320 and plenty of battery life yet. Do you think it sounds like a milk float? It does. <laughs> Their rivals, meanwhile, still have that definitely not antique palette in mind. Anything else besides? Oh, uh, wow, what is this? Well, it's got notes on it. Uh, uh, Press the button. Looks like a doorbell. Yes! Yeah, that's awesome. That is cool. <laughs> Do -do. <laughs> I think it's got age to it. I don't think it's a repro thing. I think that's got real age. Yeah. Read out the label. Tell me all about it. Morphe Richards. Morphe Richards. 1948. 48, you see. That's brilliant. Yeah, that is yep. quite old. Uh, Clinton doorbell. In good working order with bell push and transformer. I love that. How many of those are surviving? What I want to know is, just press it again. We didn't one. do two, did it? No. I think it's lost its pong. I think it yeah. is ping, but it doesn't go pong. But fancy it's still working. Yeah, that's very cool. Founded by Donal Morphy and Charles Richards in July 1936. Would you have that inside your house? I would definitely have that. I love the notes. Yeah. I think that's nipped above the palette because you like it so much. <laughs> and actually, it's got enough age. We'll keep that on the back bottom. There's something else on this table that really floats my boat. See if you can pick it out. It's a genuine antique, by the way. Is it the paint box? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a promising corner. If you could lift it up for me. These are hugely collectible when they have as much as possible of their original contents. OK. And here, you've got the original paints here. Where? And can you see you've got the annotation of what the colours are. Van Dyke, Roman ochre, okay. wow. Indian red. And it's such high quality that if you look at each lozenge of paint, mm. wow, that's they're rigid. embossed. Wow. To have a box with that original paint in is extraordinary. Wow. You can imagine a Victorian watercolourist painting using something yes. like that. And Rowney and Forster, Rowney is the name I really know as being the Rolls-Royce makers of these things, oh, wow. of paintings. It's, it's so beautifully All original. history and emotion. Do you know what that's made of? No. Mahogany. Oh, wow. I'm expecting it to be George III. Another partnership, but quite short-lived, dates it to just a few years into the 19th century. Ticket price, £145. It's a fabulous thing. And it's a genuine antique, and it's in such original condition. Mm. 200 years old, mm -hmm. nearly? Yes. It's incredible, because it's, it's like another language, hearing you oh. speak about the value of this. Makes me want to read up on my history, <laughs> <basically>. <laughs> Time to talk to dealer Richard. Sir. Sure. You are the proud owner of this lot, I think. I am indeed. Emily is intrigued by your Morphe Richards doorbell. It's a proper period piece. It, it is, isn't it, it? It's a little temperamental, but it does work. We've got the ping out of it, but not the pong. Emily likes that, don't yeah, you, Emily? very, very cool. I like that, of course. Genuine George III. Gird your loins. 95 would be the death on it, that I, I think, that 
as far as I can stretch. Yeah. It's a great thing. Over to you, Emily. Ding dong. Oh, yes. Um, what would be the best price well, to I, get on the doorbell? I think, I think I could do 40 on that. I must say, I think 40 is pretty tempting, isn't it? Yes. I'm still worried about the other item, not for what it is. Is there any chance you could do 110 for the two? I think if you could do 110 for the two, I think I'd stick my neck out and say, Emily. Let's do it. Let's go for it. I think anything over that, we're frankly struggling. I'm happy to do the two for 110. Are you sure? Yeah. Emily, what do you think? That's a very good deal. I think that's Thank really you. kind of you. May I shake your hand, you sir? Indeed. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Two more items in the old bag, 75 for the paint box and 35 for the door chimes. Right. Oh, careful. Easy does there. it. Okay. Your passion, my passion. Yes. Two great buys. 290 left. Now, stand by for a slightly noisier ignition. Come on, baby. That's it. <laughs> while we catch up with Naughty and Catherine in their thoroughly modern mini. Well, the electric bit is anyway. You're not just a producer, you're a DJ. You are a musician, you yes. are a songwriter. Yes. I mean, the list just goes on. You do everything. Yeah, I, I, I started off calling myself composer and then meeting Emily, then becoming Naughty Boy the artist, um, uh, doing a song with Sam Smith, La La La. Oh, which... I love that song. Oh, me too. I'm absolutely amazed by all the technology that there is when you're trying to compose music. I mean, there's there's all these machines. And oh they yeah, no maybe idea too many. That. Too many. And I think people use auto tune way too much. I don't even know what that is. Some probably. singers who can't sing get away with it easily. Well, with possibly a little bit of help from a sat nav, they're about to take a break from the antiquing down by the M4 towards Brentford, West London at the Musical Museum. You ready for this? Born ready. Yes, it should be fascinating, especially for a musician from the digital age. Because this collection of instruments and inventions tells the story of how recorded music has been reproduced. This is wonderful. This is such a treat. Welcome to the Musical Hi, Museum. I'm Catherine. Director Simon Hill can explain how such devices first came about. Going back into the late 1700s, early 1800s, if you wanted to hear music, you either sang or you played an instrument, or if you were rich, you employed an orchestra to play for you. But there was no other way of bringing music into the home. Which is why the barrel organ was such a revolutionary invention. This one was made in about 1814, but a lot of them you would find in a church, and the vicar would stand there, say, we're going to sing hymn number 43, turn the handle, and the congregation would sing along. What do you think about having one of these in your home? Well, I grew up with a hi-fi, so <laughs> this, yeah, this would be different, but <laughs> how does this work? Well, the reason they're called barrel organs is because there's a barrel made out of wood and on the wooden cylinder are pins, and each pin represents a note. The longer the pin, the longer the note. So when you're turning the handle, you're pumping air through the pipes and you're also turning the barrel round to play the tune. All right, Simon, is it OK if I have a go? Please do. Well, let's load the barrel in. Are you ready to be serenaded? I really am. Go on, <laughs> go for it. Oh, wow. <laughs> there is a rhythm to it. It's there so... is a rhythm, and of course, the faster you play, the faster the congregation have to sing to keep up. But tunes on a barrel organ are, of course, limited by the number of barrels that any listener, however wealthy, might be able to own. So, although they continued as a form of street entertainment, with or without the monkey, ah, the pianola, using paper rolls for music, began to supersede it in the 1880s. You could load these rolls into a whole range of different devices, and we've got one in front of us here called a push-up. If you already had a piano, you could push it up to your piano, and it would play your piano for you, like this. <laughs> Sound, wow. isn't it? It is, yes. Considering Although... you're not playing any notes at all. So if this was in someone's home, um, would any member of the family be able to play that? Absolutely. So as long as you've got enough strength to pump the pedals one after the other, then anybody could play. And you could build up a whole library of the popular music of the time. 
The Musical Museum houses one of the world's largest collections of paper music rolls, including some for a machine that was designed to emulate not just a piano, but an entire orchestra. This is an orchestrion. This is made by a German firm, Imhoff & Muckel. Uh, in about 1899, and these were installed in the very grandest of houses, including two famous patrons like Her Majesty the Queen, this one by appointment to Queen Victoria. The paper music gets loaded in here, there's the tracker bar underneath there, but this is playing a whole variety of instruments, so as well as the pipe organ you can see in front of you, there's a drum kit, there's a triangle, so this is a real orchestra in a box. Of course, that mechanical troubadour was soon rendered obsolete by a newfangled device like Thomas Edison's phonograph with its waxed cylinder. And then came the flat disc records of the gramophone to entertain us for most of the 20th century. But there'll never be anything quite like live music. Oh, look at that. Wow. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. One of the most outstanding pieces in the collection is this mighty Wurlitzer, which wowed the customers at the nearby Regal in Kingston-upon-Thames from 1932 until 1972. Yay! Wow! <laughs> Pulling out the stops, Chris Barber. You ready to have a go? Yeah. You want me to play something you're going to play over the top? Yes. OK. OK. Well, let's do that. All right. From show business to naughty business. <laughs> I think he's just added Wurlitzer Wizard to an already impressive CV. Now, with her, Emily and Charlie. Still out in the country? Emily, look! Horses! Do you ride? I don't know. Have you ever been on a horse? I have once, and yeah. it was it was lovely. <laughs> Hello! I've been on a horse once. Really? Yeah. <laughs> How did it not, go? Not, not very well. I couldn't do the up and down bit. It was a very bumpy ride. Yeah. Anyway, they'll need to get trotting to do a little more shopping in Chiswick. The Thameside Borough that gave its name to an independent record label back in the 1970s. And one hit wonders, sniffing the tears. Right, Emily, here we are. Ooh. Your emporium, madam. This looks promising. Yeah, more spending. <laughs> yes, into the cave, you two. We are tight for time. Okay, we've got 290 pounds left. We have, but not many minutes. Right. So what I suggest we split up. Okay. Where do you want to go? Uh, I'll go that way. Bye. <laughs> Yeah, this should be interesting. In their first shop, they managed a very equitable one find each. Ah, more music. Mm, really beautiful. Called a, a chord zither, auto harp. Sixty-five pounds. Hmm. What's his game? <laughs> Not exactly Larry Adler, is he? <laughs> Emily's found a book of lithographs, which shopkeeper Becky says is £95. I can understand why it's that price, but it's maybe too expensive for me. I could see if we could have a little wiggle room on it, maybe. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Time for Charlie to take a peek. I found these sitting over there, and I just thought they were very beautiful. How wonderful. Twelve engravings of sacred subjects from the old masters. Ah, look at that. Raphael Rubens, Caravaggio. Van Dyke. <laughs> and what is a lithograph? The engravings, you have a copper plate. Okay. Engraved into a copper plate, and then the lithographs would be prints from those engravings. Okay. Hence the detail. I mean, look at the detail yeah. of this. I mean, this is quite extraordinary, isn't it? These are fabulous, but my view is what somebody would do is take these out and frame them individually. Right, okay. I think that would wreck the book. But the book is in such poor condition, I think that's really all you could do with that. Yeah. I think it's a great thing, great eye you've got, but I don't think that at auction would make more than, I mean, 30, 40 pounds. Right. Oh, dear. Cover your ears. Becky! Yes? Would you come here, my dear? Where are you hiding? <laughs> Listen <gasps> out for the most unmusical sound you've ever heard in your life. You've got a collection of 
harmonicas here. We do. I think that one's quite fun. The bluebird. Mm hmm. But they made a good sound. They made a marvellous sound in my lips, didn't they? <laughs> How long have they been sitting there for? Not very Weeks? Long. Months? I'm not about to sing happy birthday to them, yeah. so we're all right. <laughs> That's good. Would you take a tenner for the lot? Go on then. Lovely. Are you sure? Go on. Happy? Yes. Give me a handshake. I mean, I never thought I'd buy four Leave of these. Leave me hanging. <laughs> oh. Better break the news then. <laughs> wow. Have you ever played the harmonica? Um, a couple of times, yeah. Have you? But I'm just not very good at it. No, no, well, as you've heard, neither am I. <laughs> but there's four old ones, including the bluebird. I've heard of the bluebird. Oh, cool, bird. yeah. Would they be saleable? Um, I don't know. Yes. <laughs> good answer. What do you think they're worth, four of them? Mm, maybe £100. <laughs> Say that again. Really. <laughs> Say that very loud. Say that very £100? loud. £100? <laughs> if I told you I'd bought them for £40, would you be pleased? I'd be very pleased. What, all four? If, all four. I'd be very impressed. Emily, sit down. <laughs> sit down, Emily, and wait for this one. If I told you I'd bought all four for a tenner, would you be over the moon? Uh, I would, yes. I bought them all for a tenner. Oh, wow. What <laughs> do, you think, do you think that's... <laughs> Phew. All's well that ends well, eh? Emily, well done. What a day. What a day. Oh. Come on in, you guys. Uh, thank you. How was that? Yeah, great. Successful? Yeah, awesome. Quite. Cheerio, Chiswick. <laughs> Let's let Naughty and Catherine have the final word on proceedings. Yes, we are. I think we've done really well. I don't want to call it too early, but... but we've got it in the bag. Yeah. Winner, winner, chicken for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Nighty night. Ah, good. Looks like they remembered to pop the electric mini on charge for the busy day ahead. What do you think of my driving today? Um, average. <laughs> You don't like me driving, do you? Strangely, for the first time in my life, I feel really rather comfortable. Do you? Yeah. Oh, well, that well, you haven't got nice. too much to think about. No, I haven't. I've got no gears to think no. about. You haven't, you haven't changed my right kneecap into third yet. <laughs> Where's the gear stick? Oh, Where's Charlie. The gear stick? <laughs> so what... I like the Mercedes. Sounds like he can't wait to get behind the wheel again. Ah, here's our glamorous couple now. I love it. Go and get your man. I'm going to get my man. How lovely to see you. Hello. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Rocking good. and rolling. Very good. <laughs> We're all over it. I would love to have a look at your purchases. Ta -da, oh. da -da, da -da. Hold on. Now. Oh, oh, what do you is, think? That oh, wow. is beautiful. That is okay, that the is. business. Who chose that and who chose that? Well, I'm guessing. What is that? A musical it's doorbell. Some kind of doorbell. It's, it's right. Morphe Richards. Oh, that's Who, fun. Th <laughs> you would not have chosen that. It's very deco, no. <laughs> it's great fun. And what are the notes? Um, ding, but ding. we've lost our dong. Oh, yeah, just the ding. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Anyway. I love the Georgian paint box. That's fabulous. Really it's nice. You've 18, got all the little ceramic trays as well. Anyway, come on. And the paint box. Let's see what you've got. I'll go and get it. Yeah, I'll go and get well, it. Right. Give me that harp, eh? We have also gone musical. Yep. We present... Oh! Ooh. Pretty, yeah. It is pretty, isn't it? It definitely got age. It's not a reproduction. No, no, exactly. I was hoping it was bronze, but it's not. Quite like the strings. But wouldn't it be nice if so that was what? like a grand tour piece or something? Mm. It's got a grand tour look about it. It really it? has. But it's a good looking item. It is. Well done. What did you pay for it? We pay thirty-eight pounds. I think you're fine. I think that ought to make fifty pounds. Do you? Yeah, okay. well, it can be a bit more optimistic than that. I think that might make £150. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you feel better now. We, feel better. <laughs> we, feel better. we still have a lot of shopping to do. We do. We, go. we are going for a ride. Amazing See you later. Later. Come on, See you darling, later. I'll put you in the car. Yeah, both our celebrities still have plenty of cash left to spend, remember? Emily has almost £300 and naughty just a little more. Later, they'll be off to the auction at Bourne End. But the first shop on today's Grand Tour is in the London district of Kew. Emily, what have you done with the weather? <laughs> I brought Scotland to oh, Windsor. Yeah. Of course, <laughs> your home country. Yeah, I feel a bit more at home today. <laughs> yes, Charlie may have mentioned his Scottish forebears once or twice, but Emily's Aberdeen upbringing definitely tops that. Growing up in Scotland really shaped who I am, I believe. 
And every time I go there, it really feels like a homecoming. Also, you know, my dad's from Zambia, my mom's from the Lake District. Yeah. I was born in Sunderland, so it's quite nice Gosh. to never quite know where's home. You know, you just embrace it all. To yeah, the yeah. Here, here. Those two are taking the morning off from the shops to visit the all-embracing botanical gardens at Kew. The unique collection with strong Scottish roots, which has become a sort of unofficial garden of the world. When did this all begin? Well, there's been a garden here of sorts, or royal ground, since the 1500s, but Kew Botanic Gardens itself started in 1759, when Princess Augusta said, OK, I want a botanic collection, I want the plants labelled, and that's where we trace our botanic garden history from. Richard Barley is the Director of Horticulture at Kew. How many species of plants do you think are here? Well, do you know? Uh, yeah, well, on this side we have about 27,000. Wow. Um, <laughs> and, and many of those are quite rare. Some are even extinct in the wild. So one of our primary purposes these days is, is conserving flora. Kew's first boss was Joseph Banks, the botanist who had sailed with Captain Cook on his maiden voyage to the South Pacific. Banks understood the economic importance of plants. He commissioned collectors to go out and, and get these extraordinary plants. And one of them was Francis Masson, who was from Aberdeen in Scotland. And actually, we have one of his plants still here. So it's, it's this plant here, which is also attached to that trunk there, and it goes right up to the top. Now, this is a cycad. It, it's a primitive plant from, from the Cape area of South Africa. This was collected by Francis Masson in about 1773. Oh. It arrived back here at Kew in 1775. Wow. And it is, as far as we know, the oldest pot plant in the entire world. <laughs> wow. It's grown here at Kew ever since 1775. Wow. And how did it survive the trip? Banks's instruction to the people on board were, do everything you can to look after mm. the health of this plant. Water it with fresh rainwater and, in fact, give preference to the plant over the people because that's more important. Right. Glad I wasn't a crew member. <laughs> Might have been a mutiny, I think. <laughs> Elsewhere in the gardens, there are millions of much smaller treasures stored away, some of which reveal the important role in scientific history played by yet another Scot. We're in the oldest part of the herbarium of Kew, and, and this is not usually open to public access, but within this herbarium, there's over seven million specimens of dried plants from around the world, mm -hmm. some, some incredible things. And actually here we've got something quite special. So this is the very specimen from which a plant was described and named. But this one in particular was collected by Charles Darwin <gasps> when he was in the Galapagos Islands. So, well. so this was part of the resource, part of his herbarium, from which he then compiled his seminal work on the origin of species, underpinning and describing the whole theory of evolution. He was a close collaborator with Joseph Hooker, director of Kew. It was back here at Kew that a lot of this scientific work was going on. Who was Joseph Hooker? Joseph Hooker was the son of William Hooker, Kew's first official director. He studied medicine at Glasgow University. Oh, which, so did I, yeah. <laughs> so, in fact, his initial um, sort of career was at a, as a medical doctor and he went as the ship's surgeon on the Erebus when that made its voyage to Antarctica. However, he also trained as a botanist and on his father's death, he then took over as director of Kew and that was a role he held for 20 years. Very, very key figure in Kew's history and, and in the world of botanical science. But in the almost 250 years since that other Scotsman brought a pot plant back from the Cape, Kew's role has changed. No longer the hub of an empire's power, taking rubber tree seeds from one continent to establish plantations on another, the garden is now part of a network trying to help save a threatened planet. Are there still explorers out there bringing specimens back? Maybe not explorers, but certainly um, there are scientists around the world um, discovering new flora every year. We have over 300 scientists employed by Q, and they work in partnership with communities around the world. And each year, something around 2,000 new species are discovered. And of course, all of this is incredibly important in terms of our understanding of the world and its habitats, its ecosystems. So Q embodies a centre of plant knowledge that is immensely valuable. Now, back 
to the home counties, Naughty and Catherine have motored the Mini towards deepest Surrey. We had a very brief encounter with antique shopping yesterday. Yes. But have you got the bug? I definitely have the bug, and I'm a bit scared for myself after this because I think I'm going to start my own antique collection. <laughs> it doesn't take much, does it? I love it. But I want to, like, just spread our wings more today and just, like, think some jewellery, maybe. Oh, I like that, yeah. yeah. Or even a brooch. A brooch? Yeah, I've noticed you like a brooch. Where yes. does the interest in, in brooches come from? Well, this is Egyptian, so when you wear this, you, you're spiritually protected from anyone or anything. So, that's... Charlie and Emily, we're protected <laughs> against them. Sounds a trifle extreme. I think that buying well in Ashstead could well prove more effective. Look at this. What I love about this is easy to park. Yes. Perfect. £320 left, remember? Howdy. Hello. I'm Catherine. Catherine, nice to meet Naughty you. Boy. Hello, no, sir. Naughty Boy. Hello, sir. Naughty Boy. We've nice come to, to behave ourselves, though, haven't we? Yes, we have. <laughs> it's not about the winning, but it is. It is. Of course it is, yeah. <laughs> like this. What do you think about this, first of all? What, what do you think that is? If you look at it, look at the shape of it, it's gothic, isn't it? Like yes. gothic, gothic arches. Yes. And this is the ultimate for your breakfast table. Oh, wow. This is an expandable toast rack. Isn't that fantastic? Wow. So you can have big pieces and of toast. A silver yes. plate, not silver. I mean, had it been silver, then this would be the business. And it also really cares about the size of your bread. Because it does. That'd be for thick bread. Exactly. Or if you've got a big family, big table, Oh, you could and they've it. all got to stretch in for the toast, you see. You want it like that. Yeah. I just think it's wonderful. It's quite, do you think it's musical? It's like a concertina. Yeah. He can get a tune out of anything. Yeah, I, I really think, love that. I think that is I a think brilliant this deserves a chance. Design. Don't break it. Oh, Don't oh, do it too oh, much. Oh, we could make music with this. Yeah, musical toast. <laughs> <laughs> How much is this? It can be £60. Should we? Yeah, there's a little bit of leeway. Ash Dead's warming up nicely. Let's hear what the opposition are planning. Do you think it's a day of a big spend? I or, think so. You think so? I want you to walk into the shop today and to look at something and say, Charlie, I've got to have that. <laughs> OK. And I want to be able to say, Emily, have that. <laughs> Our chanteurs and auctioneer combo are about to arrive in Kingston-upon-Thames. Musical connection? The last resting place of Nipper, the gramophone curious terrier immortalised by HMV Records. Emily, look. Oh, yeah. That's the antique shop. Park. Perhaps Naughty's eye brooch is having an effect. Anyway, having nipped inside, there's an awful lot to spend the £280 on. I mean, look up. Oh, these are pretty. Ah! Oh. Steady, Charlie. <laughs> Just say that again. These are very pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. You know, I walked in here and I sort of... Didn't really dare look up there yeah. because they are a statement Art Deco wow. pair of light shades. I was slightly worried when I looked underneath and I saw modern fitments in them, mm. thinking they might be reproduction, but I'm pretty certain that they are old ones, 1930s, oh, really? that somebody's put adapters in wow. so that you can use them today. Wow. And they're pretty. Yeah. £70 is the ticket price on those. I think if they were reproduction, you wouldn't see the odd strand missing. Can you see there's a gap there? Yes. Well, if you're going to make something in reproduction, you wouldn't leave a couple of bits out. Most illuminating, Charlie. Back to the Ashted attic. They've parked the expanding Gothic toast rack. Now, there's a table. What country is that from? Is it Indo-Persian? Persian. Yeah, my cats are Persian. Ah, oh, yeah. are they? Is this sort of something that you thought about, maybe? With Eastern promise? Yes. Would I have it in my own home? And I would have that. Would you? Uh, yes. It's an occasional table, really. You could use that in any room. There's a lot of hard work that's gone into that. It is quite finely carved. No, it is. Also, I... on, on all the panels, octagonal in shape, and you can collapse it down. I like it. What do you think about that? Likes a ponder. Oh! We got the finger. I think... The pointed yeah. finger. Is that a good finger or I think, naughty finger? No, it's not a naughty <laughs> finger, but I think everything has an element of risk. So we're not going to just be like, oh, you know. Definite. But I like that. Can we park yeah. that? It's already parked, yeah. that one. £60. Pounds. Anything else, sir? I think on. 
<laughs> What's going on? Where's the eye going to? Where's the Where's third the eye? eye going? Mm. Are you a gambling man? Um, not gambling man, but I love numbers. Roulette. Place your bets. Has it got a... It has. Rien de va plus. <laughs> I love that ring. I do, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's not plastic. This is Bakelite. Uh, Bakelite. OK, if this comes up with number 11, it's a definite. What's special about 11? Is that your lucky number? My birthday is New Year's Day, so first of the first. This is not going to happen, Nick. Yeah, There's absolutely no chance. There. Well, there is actually. 37 to 1. <laughs> is the eye watching it? Lordy. Oh, what does that mean? A zero is a sign as well. Yes, it's a naughty. <laughs> Can we have a look at this? Oh, that's heavy. This is very nice quality, isn't it? It's very good quality. It's thick bakelite and... So this, this is, is 20s? Steel. I mean, wow. That, that weighs a ton. And that does. And I have got the original box. Oh, have you? And the mats. Oh, that helps. Black and red. Tatty, but it's all there. What's the price on this one? £60. Pounds. Everything seems to be £60 pounds today, Why's doesn't it? the £60 pounds shop? Catchy! So we've got 60 60 and 60 in our wonderful £60 pound shop. Can a deal be done on this? The best I can do is 130 That's knocking £50 pounds off. Are you happy with that? Yes, more than I think that is very, very yes. generous. Thank you. OK, thank, thank you very you much. Thank you so indeed. much. So, that's £40 for the toast rack, 50 for the table and 40 for the roulette wheel. Shop top, do you mind grabbing the table? Ben with the leaves. Lovely, yes. lovely job. Wonderful. Off to the auction. Bye-bye. Thanks, Gary. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Arrivederci, Ashton. And off she floats. How are things in Kingston? Keen upon the shades, of course. You know what this is? Um, a cabinet, but what's this Yeah. For? Is it something musical? Hey. Music box or very record player? Ah! <laughs> Ready? Yes. Wow. His master's voice. HMV. There's Nipper. Have a look at the record that's on it. What did you sing at the Olympic Games? Abide with me. Abide with me. Yes. What's on there? Abide with me. The great thing about this is, here, all those are records. Oh, wow. And they come with it. Wow. All those records. Now, the mechanism needs a bit of work. Imagine doing this today <laughs> with one of your songs. Just like the cup final. All stand. It's beautiful, isn't it? Fast falls evening. Oh. It's a different tune. It's interesting, yeah. isn't it? Frederick Firth, the boy with the golden voice. Blimey. He's up in his register. Yeah. Shall we put an end to him? <laughs> Stunning. Can I hear a bit of your abide with me? Um, yeah. Just a little bit. Abide with me. As for the evening tide. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> that brings back a lot of memories. And I was there. Yeah. Really? In yeah, the wow. I was there at the opening ceremony. Oh, wow. Uh, that was a moment. And I have to say, I got my hanky out. Oh, really? <laughs> Never mind all that. Are you having it? Can we afford it? Can we afford it? <laughs> Good question. The price? It's £145. I would say we can afford it. Are you happy to give it a go? Yes, please. Let's see what we can do. Right. Pip, pip. I've just seen something, actually. I wanted to know what you thought. It looks reproduct... Oh, no, it doesn't. <laughs> when I first saw it, I thought, this is the sort of thing that would be reproduced, but it's got such great weight to it. What drew you to that? It has quite an Egyptian vibe, um, with the Beatles. And yes. So uh, I just found it really intriguing. What is it? What's the label say? A trinket box. Would you keep your trinkets in something like that? It's quite small. I think it was an ashtray. But it doesn't have to be an ashtray now. Yeah. I think Pretty. it's charming. What's it worth? I would estimate that at an auction at 40 to 60 pounds. What's your label price? 65 pounds. Well, we're going to have to leave it to you, Emily. Oh, OK, this is quite a challenge. Yeah, time to have a word with Matthew. Are, are these all belong to you? The lights and the gramophone do. This belong is another dealer. This is another dealer. Yeah. What do you think might be the best on that? Um, he would normally do 10%, so it would yeah. be £60. Yes. But because it was Emily who was interested in it, he would oh, do it for 50 Oh, oh. <laughs> that's a nice discount. <laughs> <laughs> Good. And what about the other items? I could do them for £15 each, so the pair for 30 
That's a bit of a reduction, isn't it? That is a bit of a reduction. And what about this? Um, what if we did a 50% discount on that then for you? And we say 50% discount? Half of 145 is £72.50. It probably rounds down to 70, £70 doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is generous. Oh, Emily, £100 for those two or £50 for that. If we said £90 for the two, I think Emily would come swimming in behind me. <laughs> I could probably do 95 make it a little bit sweeter for you. Are you happy with that? Absolutely. I think 95 is a great price. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. Yes. Should we shake the hand? Yeah, thank you very thank much. You. <laughs> so, those shades are £30 and the gramophone 65 Great shopping. Good shopping. Yes, yes, it's been a busy day. Now for the auction. I've never been to Bourne End, Catherine. I have, and I should know the way, but I'm quite good at getting people lost. OK, well, I've got my maps on my phone. Good. The only thing with these kind of rural areas... It all areas, looks the same, doesn't it? Yeah, and signal. It's fine, we'll get there one day. Shut Eye comes first. Night, night. Ah, here we are, down by Father Thames once again. All friends in the bends. I didn't know what to expect when they said I was going to be with Naughty Boy. <laughs> I know, but the name does give a false impression on me. Yes, I'm... you are a very, very Oh, but you are. Boy. You're nicely naughty. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's go to a country golf club. Do you play golf, Naughty? No, but I like the buggies. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's one for later, if all goes well. After starting out at Bracknell, our music makers and their trusted advisers have been up to town before coming back to Berkshire at Bourne End Auction Rooms with internet bidding. Come on, Naughty. Let's show them how it's done. Let the games begin. Take my arm, Emily. I'll lead you to paradise. <laughs> Time to grasp the nettle. Emily spent just 215 of her £400 on five auction lots. They bought this pair of Art Deco beaded okay. lamps. What do you think? I'm a little bit jealous. You're jealous? A little bit, because I like these. They are nice, aren't they? Yeah. It's really quite finely beaded, and it's lovely because you can see the pattern. They've got a chance, haven't they? No, they need all the help they can get. <laughs> <laughs> Naughty parted with even less for his five lots, £210. Do you play roulette? Uh, no, but I love how this looks. <laughs> It's quite fun, isn't it? I'll tell you what, you hold the ball. OK. What's your favourite number? Uh, four. Mine's 32. Give it a spin. <laughs> I don't <laughs> believe <Yeah>. that. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to win. Yeah, that does seem a bit propitious. Let's hear what auctioneer Simon Brown really likes. Love the Victorian, expanding, cantilever, toast rack, quirky and, of course, useful. So, something that's period that can be used today. Roni and Foster artist box with the original label and a lot of the original paints. Very interesting. I like that very much. They have bought some good items. Time to get rid. Ooh. Feeling more nervous? Yes. <laughs> now, does opportunity knock or does it go ding dong? I don't have a doorbell. Right? Do you have a doorbell? Yes. What tune does it play? Oh, it's quite an annoying sound. It goes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What about yours, Naughty Boy? Um, well, my doorbell is charging, so I, I've never heard it. <laughs> Stylish looking piece, start me at £30, please, for this lot. 30 anybody interested? 20 I'm bid, anybody interested? 20 oh. 20 20, I'm bid, got you at 20. Yours at 20, 22 with the serum at 22. Yours at 22, we all done at 25 no. pounds. Now 22, I'm bid, got you at 22. Oh, Emily. Done. At 22. No. At 22, we all done at 22. Dong. <laughs> Reminds you of grandmother, 22. No, 22, I'm bid, got you at 22. We all done, thank you. Where was I Granny when it. you needed her? Certainly not the start they'd hoped for. That's fine. It's stuffing. Maybe nothing to you. <laughs> it's a stab in Emily's heart. Naughty's first lot is also musical, his little harp. I'm trying to channel good bids right now. 
I may be quiet for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Start me at £30, please, for this lot. 30 Anybody interested? 30 Nobody interested. Try 20 then. 20 I'm bid. 22 25 27 30 32 At 32 now, we all done. At £32 <laughs> now, selling at 32 We all done. No more. 32 Whoa, 35 now with 35 I'm bid. Selling at 35 We all done at 35 now. Thank you. Oh, nearly. That's OK. Yeah. Yeah. That's OK. That's just, cool. just under the bar. Ah, the power of positive thinking. Chin up. Oh, no. No, it's just because I like it. Yeah, I'm not sad. Positive. Emily's turn. Those deco lamps that Charlie spied first. Were they hanging up? Yeah, they were hanging up in the ceiling. Because you would, you'd walk past them if they were yeah. on the table. Start me at thirty pounds, please, for this lot. Thirty. Anybody interested? At thirty. Nobody interested. At thirty. Twenty then to start. Twenty. Anybody interested? At twenty. Nobody Looks like I'm responsible. It's your responsible. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I got a bit of ten. Are we all done? At ten pounds now in the corner at ten. Oh, Decker. Nine, Twelve, fourteen. 14, 16, looking for 16 online. 14 to the room. Selling at 14, are we all done? No, no, no. No. 14, are we all done? Thank you. Emily, will you ever forgive me? Yes. <laughs> of course she will. Could happen to anyone. I've got the glums now. I know what that feels like. And it's not yeah. nice. It's not no, a good feeling, no, is it? Come on, fellas. Just wait till they get a butcher's hook at those. Start me at twenty pounds, please. Twenty with a ridden bid. Good. 20, Straight 20, in. Twenty-five, twenty-seven, thirty, thirty-two, thirty-two with a ridden bid. Thirty-five online, looking for thirty-seven now. Thirty-seven online. Forty, I'm bid, looking for forty-two, forty-two, forty-five. Forty-five, forty-five, I'm bid. Got you. Drop forty-five, it. looking yes. for forty-seven now. Are we all done. Uh, thank you. Well done. Bring it, Charlie. Bring oh. it. <laughs> That's more like the old naughty. How are you feeling with your first ever auction? Enjoying it? It's exciting. It's very emotional. Yeah. <laughs> I'm quite exhausted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, me too. Charlie's sneaky harmonica purchases next. Cheap mind. Charlie, do you play the harmonica? Not those ones. <laughs> quite old. <laughs> Still four harmonicas for a tenner. Yeah, four rusty harmonicas. <laughs> Start me at £20, please, for this lot. 20 Anybody interested? 20 Nobody interested? 20, 10 to start then, 10 I'm bid, got you at 10 in the front row, 12 online, 14, 14, 16, looking profit. for 16 now, 14 in the front now, at 14 are we Not a whopping one? profit, and is it? 16, <laughs> pounds, no. 16, got you at 16, 18, 16 online, selling at 16, are we all done at 16 with easy record. we all done 18 in front Oh, of yes, they're loving these high. Selling eight. at 18, yours at 18, are we all done now, thank you. Charlie, that was a yeah. miracle. <laughs> <laughs> Quite. Perhaps it is their lucky day. Ah, here's Naughty's Wheel of Fortune. I picked up your roulette wheel and I said to Emily, and this is without a word of a lie, I said, what's your favourite number? And what did you say? Four. Four. I spun the wheel. Emily dropped the ball in. What number did it come up? No. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Though? No, it is. Because I've been trying to get number 11. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> start me at £20, please, for this lot. 20 anybody interested? Try 15, then to start. Oh, no way. 15, this is such a good thing. 15, nobody interested. 15, I'm big. 15, this is such a good thing. Done. I would have bought this 15 for 60. Pounds now selling at 15. No. Are we all done? Got you. 15 on. pounds. Come are we all on. done? I'm selling at 15. Are we all done? Oh, I can't believe that. No. Well, 15 was certainly somebody's lucky number. I would have been for that. I would have been for that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you. I would have done. I would have done. This one goes round and round too. Emily's gramophone. Have you not seen our record player? No. Would you like to see it? I would love to see it. I'm going to take you to see it. Oh, you come with me. Is this your secret weapon? Yeah, yeah. Come with me. Come with me. We won't be a moment. Abide with me. Emily performed. Yeah. Oh wow. How cool is that? And that came with it. That came with it. Oh, that's a sign. That is a sign. Start me at fifty pounds, please, for this lot. Come on, fifty to start. Fifty, I'm bid. Fifty-five, sixty, sixty, I'm bid. Got you. 60, looking for 65 on, now. Yeah. 65, I'm bid. Got you at 65. Looking for 70 now. 65, I'm bid. Oh, 75, oh, 65, oh, 65 oh, with easy life. Oh. Done now. Oh, 
No, but that's, that's okay. Good. No, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Not so much break beat as break evens, eh? I love your <laughs> so all of a sudden start singing to try and get you more. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that would really keep people off. Gothic toast, anyone? Would you like it buttered or buttressed? Of all the toast tracks I've seen in the last few weeks, this is the best. Oh, yeah. I love it. It's quality. It's expandable. This one's the treasure. Our hidden gem. Gonna make a lot of bread. Yeah. Musical <laughs> toast. <laughs> Start me at twenty pounds, please, for this lot. Twenty. I'm bid. Got you at twenty, twenty-two, twenty-five, twenty-five, twenty-seven, thirty, thirty. I'm bid. Selling at thirty. Yours at thirty, thirty-two, thirty-five, thirty-five, thirty-seven, forty. 40, 42, 45, 45, 47, 45, I'm bid. Selling at 45, no, 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 no. to the room. I had 45, we all done at 45, got gotcha. you at 45, we all done at 45, 47, no. Selling at 45, we all done to the room now. Oh, that was so good. You can't go wrong with toast, can you? That was a crumb, a crumb of a profit. <laughs> <laughs> now, all eyes are on Charlie's choice, the watercolour box. Lovely. I mean, this is the big one, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I think yeah. it's the big one. My neck is on the block here, isn't it? <laughs> I'm actually really nervous. I'm nervous now. now. <laughs> right, we'll start me at fifty pounds, please. For this fifty, I'm big. Let's start. 50, good, good. 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, <laughs> 90, 95, 100, 100, 110, 120, 120 with this a ribbon bid. Looking for 130 online. 130 online. 140, I'm big. It's going on the two online, 160, 170 with the sale room. Looking Trust for the 180, 180, got you 190, 200, 220, yours at 220, 240 online, 260 what? online, Charlie. got you at 260. Are we all done at 260? Are we out in the room at 260 pounds now? Thank you. Wow. Well done. <laughs> Well, that one really made quite a splash. Well done. It's what they call a roller coaster. Yeah. Yes. Some up, some down. Some mediocre. Some in the middle. And some where you hang on the roller coaster for 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Until they call emergency services. <laughs> <laughs> Last white knuckle ride coming up. Your occasional table, sir. Let's channel positive bid energy yeah. to the table. Yeah. 50 pounds. Oh, send, <laughs> send in positivity. I'll do it for you. Yeah. With your fingers. Table. Start me at 30 pounds, please, for this lot. 30, I'm bid. Got Straight in. 30. Yours Straight 30. in. Have we all done at 30? Well, don't Maybe say that. So this was your most expensive lot, wasn't it? Yeah. We're all done. Looking for 35 now. 32 online, got you. 35. Come on, we need more than this. Keep Looking going. 37 online. 37, 40 to the room. I keep channeling. 40, I'm bid. 42 online. 42, no. 40 in the room. You're saying are, you, are you there? We're all yes. done. Thank you. Oh. Well, thanks to all of that, it only made a small loss. <laughs> I think we kind of got a little bit of an inkling who's won this one. But let's just go and check the figures, shall we? Yeah, yes. Okay. Good idea. Although it was definitely the watercolours what won it. Naughty Boy and Catherine started out with £400, and after auction costs, they made a bit of a loss. So they ended up with £337.60. While Emily and Charlie, who also began with 400, produced a very respectable profit, also after costs, which means their winning total is 495 pounds and 78 pence. And all that profit goes to children in need. Come on, let's go somewhere exciting. Let's celebrate. Yes, champagne's on you. Yes. <laughs> no, on you. Oh, yes, so it is. What a trip it's been. Naughty, but nice. Are you gracious in defeat? I think you are. What defeat? <laughs> Charlie, we're gracious. all winners here. I forgot. Of winners. course we are. But no. We yeah. had a ball. Yeah, we yeah. did. And we still believe in everything we bought. Yes. Yep. yes. It's just a shame nobody else did. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Cheerio. <laughs> Look at that.